Boa tarde. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's the only thing I know uh, in Portuguese. Uh, okay, let's start. Yep. So uh, I was introduced already, uh, so I'll, I will not spend too much time on that, uh, except that currently I still work with National Library. Uh, I am responsible for cultural development, uh, cultural heritage portal development uh, at National Library. Uh, other than that, I also have a startup company uh, that develops games and virtual reality experiences. Uh, so, library. Library, Wikipedia says that it's a place of knowledge. And Wikipedia doesn't lie, right? Uh, so, uh, if it's a place of knowledge, uh, people usually think about books. So, uh, if you ask uh, public what library is, they would say it's a place where I can borrow a book. Uh, and even IFLA and uh, many libraries in the world uh, are trying to introduce new services and change the view to the libraries. Uh, people, people and many librarians also still think that library is about books. Uh, so, besides that, many libraries already have mark maker spaces, uh, they have services that uh, help to implement SDGs, which uh, for a long version is uh, Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which is very IFLA agenda. Uh, and in general, uh, library is an essential part in having educated and literate population, right? So, um, why games then? And by the way, if I repeat myself, uh, because I don't know what people before me were speaking about, I didn't understand anything. Uh, so, <laughs> just throw tomato at me and I will know that I should skip the slide. Okay? So, uh, I will tell about what we do in Lithuania uh, and some other countries, uh, but there are still many people in Lithuania uh, and in other countries in the library world that believe that libraries should be books. Um, and I will try to touch this topic because I feel that before speaking about games, uh, we should uh, kind of at least agree where we stand. So, uh, knowledge is of two types. One is explicit knowledge, and this is all kinds of regulations, instructions, documents. It can be written. Uh, and books, in most ways, is explicit knowledge. So this is a recipe book, and if I read a recipe in the book, Theoretically, I should be able to make that dish, right? But what if? So the chef just showed you how to make this round wrapper, right? Do you know how to make it already? I tried, I don't. So this type of knowledge is tacit knowledge. Uh, it's know-how skills, expertise, tips, and tricks that you gain over experience. So tacit knowledge can be technical and it can be cognitive. So, so technical is more like skills and cognitive is uh, understanding, uh, feeling, intuition, ideas uh, that you gain over your experiences. So uh, for example, people who work at the library for 20 years, they know what will happen even it's before it starts happening, right? You just have this feeling. Uh, and that's the cognitive tacit knowledge. And the difference between this knowledge, uh, explicit and, and oh, sorry, tacit knowledge is that tacit knowledge cannot be learned by reading a book or instruction. You have to really try it and try it many times. 
So the other concept is intelligence, and, and it's two types of intelligence. One is crystallized intelligence, and that is fluid intelligence. Uh, many elder people, and I'm not that old, but not that young anymore, uh, so I can feel that, you know, like people in 20s, they would just go with the things and they would try and uh, do whatever nonsense. I think this is nonsense, but they, they still do it and somehow it, they are able to do it. Uh, so that's the difference. Crystallized intelligence is what you learn over your past experience. It's, your, it's facts and you can improve it through learning like mathematics, uh, physics, and all these things. Fluid intelligence, on the other hand, is capacity to reason and ability to learn new things and react fast. So that's why with time, the younger gener generation always takes over. Because with age, fluid intelligence declines and it's scientifically proven that uh, over after 40 years old you your fluid intelligence just go down uh, and it will happen whether you believe it or not uh, then crystallized knowledge is just going up all the time uh, so the older you are the, no, the more you know but the slower you are to react and when you combine these two together, you get your intelligence in general. So, applying these concepts, uh, we, you could already feel that, uh, I will come back to the books. Uh, at the library, if we want to be the place of knowledge, we have to help our users or patrons to keep learning new things from the books, of course, but also we have to be able to help them explore new things, experience new things, build new things, and do new things. Uh, and if library is really uh, the place of knowledge, it should be able to do all of these things. And this is why I think that games play a part uh, at the library. So, National Library of Lithuania, our mission is to become an integral, integral part of the state information policy, culture, education, science, and economic progress. Uh, quite a lot for a library. But National Library is usually a lot bigger than just public library. Uh, but part, part of it is public library. So, what do we do in our public space? Uh, of course, makerspace activities, uh, so like robotics, table games, Legos, creating virtual worlds, uh, music rehearsal rooms, things like that. Uh, then we host global game jam event, I will talk about it later. Uh, we do video games for traditional exhibitions to attract people to our booths, for example in booth fear. In uh, book fear, we have a video game where people would come to our uh, place and play it. Uh, then we do virtual reality experiences to enhance uh, exhibitions and provide context for it. Like why this book is important to be on this exhibition, for example. Uh, then currently we are creating a virtual reality system for cultural heritage portal so that every library can easily create their own experiences in virtual reality. And we are also creating one game that I will tell about later. Still, when we talk about games and libraries, uh, we have all the concerns. Violent content. So people usually say that games are violent, and many of them are. Then, addictive properties of games, like about two to three percent based on research is, uh, of gamers con are considered addicted to the games. But actually, I think it's in all areas, it's the same, like two or three percent of people are addicted to anything they do. Some to work, some to drinking. 
then again, this is the, the funny argument is ruining eyesight. Actually, the eyes are ruined not by playing a games. It, it, they are ruined by reading in the dark or by looking at the one point for a very long time. Uh, then the eyes get tired. Uh, when people play a game, they actually look to all different corners. And, and there are studies now that show that actually games improve eyesight. <laughs> Okay, so the, the most serious topic is game addiction, though. Uh, and there is research, uh, this one is done in Korea. Uh, they, they found that uh, the types of games that are addictive are role-playing games, where you assimilate some role. Uh, then simulation games that simulate certain environment, like racing, for example. Uh, and casual games. And casual games are the games that are played very short for a very short time. They just click, 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 and then you know they are over. And then people, for some reasons, keep clicking all the time. Uh, and they were looking for the reasons uh, why people get addicted to the games. And and one uh, conclusion that they came is that really the the main factor is satisfaction with rela uh, with relationship with your parents, friends, and teachers. Uh, so addiction to games is actually not trying to stay in the game. It's more like trying to stay away from your real life. Uh, so people who are not happy with their real life are trying to be addicted to something else. Uh, some to drinking, some to playing games, etc. Then why people play games? I imagine that people before me spoke about this a bit, uh, but uh, research shows that mostly people play games because uh, they provide them ability to be someone else, um, be in some different environment and be important in that environment. Then they get uh, achievement, uh, meaning that they, f they feel fulfilled uh, in a racing game, for example. They, they keep playing and winning and getting better, and this, this is what they get from the game. And then they have a social aspect where they just uh, play with friends and feel part of something. Uh, and again, game provides very easy way to change your social environment. Uh, so social conditions in general uh, that enhance curiosity and support autonomy, meaning that people do whatever they want to do and nobody is pushing them too much, uh, and letting them feel that they are competent and they are related, these kind of conditions, they, they let people create better things and the people learn faster than in pushy conditions and uh, like our schools of, often are. Uh, so that's why that's why uh, games are so attractive because they create these social conditions. Also we noticed that um, kids who do very bad at school or, or, or who like Teachers don't know what to do with them. They always talk during classes. They skip lessons and etc. They do pretty well at maker spaces and at the environments where they can create whatever they want. They they do quite often better than ordinary kids. Uh, so, but one important aspect is that you have to let them do what they want. <laughs> Uh, so library can be this kind of environment where these kids uh, actually have a chance to feel that they are uh, they are also important because uh, when they are doing bad and nobody just talks to them they just become worse and worse because they are out of social circle. Uh, this is one example from Marvilla Public Library in Portugal. I don't know if you heard about it, but uh, it's uh, about the 
the kid who was dropped out for three years in a row at school. And in Marvilla, they just opened a new library not too long ago, a few years ago. And this kid came to library and played games. And they allow, let him play the games. Uh, and after playing for a few years, uh, he decided he wants to build games. Okay, this doesn't work again. Okay, so uh, he started to learn creating games and he got his new dreams to be a game developer and professional game player. Uh, for that, you need to finish school. So he started to go back to school. Uh, and this is a short example, but it shows that, uh, you know, games has, have its power to attract and if you use them wisely, you can kind of make it. So, uh, yeah, I don't need a life. I'm a gamer, I have lots of life. This is like a very no cliche in game environment, but not maybe in library. Uh, so, uh, change social life environment easily. Uh, create the flow. What is flow? Flow is a feeling that you are, whatever you are doing, you are doing right. You don't think about other things and you are feeling go good about yourself. And this is what game designers are trying to create in game. Uh, if we create this feeling in real life, people should be happy theoretically all the time. Then again, autonomy and relatedness, meaning feeling part of something. Uh, so, when knowing these things, uh, we tried in our library, we tried to think, can we make a game as a service at the library? So, this is an example of a, a VR experience in a real book uh, exhibition. And... Uh, we, they are called serious games. Uh, so serious games, they, they, their goal is to actually teach something, to uh, help people gain skills or to change the attitude or behavior. Meaning that you don't develop game for fun, you develop game to, for example, teach people business or teach people how to change electric wires in the train and things like that. So companies do this uh, for quite a long time now, and we thought that we might maybe want to do this in the library. Lengvus saloje aptars kartu su psichologu ir bendramžiais. Skirtumas tas, kad visa tai vyksta virtuolioje ir dvėje. Vaikai yra į kompiuterinio žaidimo menę susirinkę avatarai, psichologas savo noris. I can translate if you make it quieter. Uh, so, this is a game that was developed for psychologists at the library. Uh, and they have group meetings in the game. And in the game, they talk about their problems. So, these are kids from families where their parents are. Uh, whether drinking or having a drug addict, so these kids have a lot of problems, and they are like this one is 16 year old kid, and he's telling that when he's behind the computer and nobody actually knows who he is, and he doesn't know other people behind the avatars in game, they talk about their problems, and then he's not afraid that someone will laugh at him after that. Uh, so kids are actually a lot more open about their problems when they talk and participate in this uh, while hiding behind avatars. Uh, and this, uh, after, because they also didn't really want to participate at the beginning, we had to build this uh, world where they can get kind of in-game money uh, for participating in this psychology uh, event, and then they, they can build houses and buy dogs, etc., for that money. Uh, so this was quite successful, and now it, uh, they moved to the next phase uh, where 
parents and children participate in the same uh, kind of psycho uh, psychology uh, well, session. Yes, thank you for the word. Uh, another example is at National Library. We wanted to show uh, some culture and uh, this is about um, okay words yeah so this is about uh, me ancient philosophers and when you come to the library you can talk to them in virtual reality and hear their thoughts uh, basically uh, this is our new uh, game uh, where elder people the idea is that it's like experimental service uh, so elder people uh, for elder people adults and kids so we have three different environments uh, so this is children environment uh, but the main idea was that elder people should be able to communicate to AI artificial intelligence and ask them uh, ask it about uh, news about what's what new books are in the library and things like that and in order to make it also not just like dry service we added some games like chess golf uh, mini golf like tennis basketball uh, and it's still in development and should be ready this winter uh, winter for us your summer uh, uh, this is environment for adults where we have like also racing card games and things like that. Uh, so there, like when we develop service like game as a service at the library, we have to think about these things, and that's uh, why I'm not encouraging libraries to just start developing games. Uh, as a service because first thing you need experts in user experience and you know you, ha you have to understand that the scope of it you need artists programmers sound designers testers game designers or level designers and uh, so even before starting to to think about it you have to ask your question why are we building this game can can we do this without uh, actually making a game? Can, can we do the same service some, some in a different way? One reason is this. We dream of exploring the unknown, discovering what lies beyond. The entire initiative is at risk. None of the Golden Worlds panned out. They're a bust. We need to find more resources, but that takes people, and we can't wake them up. Now more than ever, we need a Pathfinder. Maybe I'm foolish, maybe I'm blind. Thinking I can see through this, see what's behind. Got no way to prove it, so maybe I'm lying. No way this is home. Oh. That's why I'm here, exploring the unknown. Who are these guys? These are just like us. Get her on the shuttle now! Uh, nice work, kid. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. Don't put the blame on me. Don't put the blame on me. The game is mine. He has access! No more mercy. Kill them all. So this is what uh, youngsters are used to playing. And the budget of this game is 76 million euros. So we cannot expect library to develop something like this, right? <laughs> but our users will be expecting something like this. Uh, so this is example of 
this experience that I was telling before. So it's very important to understand the scope of the game. And if you want to develop a game uh, or experience, you have to really limit yourself to the message you want to provide. Uh, then you can create something of a more quality. Uh, but still, uh, we are talking about, you know, couple, like in tens of thousands uh, of euros or, or dollars. Uh, so for a small library, it's really uh, not, unless you write to some foundation, get some money, then you, you know, do something. But, but really, it's not something that you can build as a service easily. Although, there are many, many free tools uh, that you know you can get. Like all the engines are free, and uh, there is you don't even need to learn programming these days. It's like it's called visual programming. You see these boxes with uh, with the arrows on the screen there. Uh, so actually, you can create game without knowing how to program theoretically. But then again, you need 3D art for that. Uh, if you are making 3D game, uh, now 3D is very wide concept, so uh, I will not talk about it here. I will talk about it more tomorrow uh, in my session, uh, what types of 3D meshes are there and why some of them can be used in games and some cannot. Uh, so then again, you need tools to create 3D art. You need 3D space and understand how it works. And if you are adding multiplayer to that, then I mean the complexity just grows. Uh, so, if library wants to make a game, it's really possible. But I would kind of stay with simple 2D games uh, with narrative. Narrative. I've heard word, word narrative before, <laughs> so I guess uh, like book texts are. Great narratives for uh, as a start, uh, as inspiration, uh, focus message, uh, less programming, more quality, less development in general. And we can also use uh, many digitized con objects that we already have. So uh, it's not creating a game, it's gamifying your cultural experience. That would I say. Uh, makes sense for the library to do. Um, trying to explain through game why this book, this image makes sense, why it's important to our culture, social environment, things like that. And, and these are quite easily made and you don't need a lot of experience for that. Uh, here I'm just showing our in-development uh, tool for librarians so that uh, they just add content from Cultural Heritage Portal and uh, they put these feet uh, so when people look at them they move to that place uh, and they kind of experience it in virtual reality. So this is just a short example uh, of how it can be made. So. What makes sense more is making games with library users, not for them. Uh, and making games with library users is actually a lot easier and uh, a lot more fun than just making games for them. And this is one example of how a game might look like, because you don't need to you know, create this amazing multi-million you know, game. Uh, what you want is you want to, first of all, attract people to the library, uh, and then you want them to learn something new. And while doing such a game, you know, eight-year-old or ten-year-old kid will learn to draw, uh, someone will learn to program, someone will learn to do music, and uh, it will be a fun experience. So, uh, one very good example of creation of such uh, experience is uh, Burning Man Festival in the United States, Nevada. 
uh, it's not game creation, but it's very similar in its uh, idea. So it's eight-day festival where 74,000 people come. And there are over 300 art installations, and nobody pays for them. Uh, except people who make installations actually pay for the ticket to come. Uh, there is no money in the festival except for coffee and ice, because it's in the desert, it's very hot. Uh, and there are zero rubbish bins, meaning that nobody has where to put their trash and has to take it with them. And there is no center stage and no booked uh, artists or booked musicians. Uh, and there are over 2,000 volunteers. Uh, if you've never seen it, you can like, try and look on YouTube. Uh, it's crazy festival. This is how the, in the background you can see the city. Uh, this is what they are building. So for one week they build the city and then they kind of just remove it. And uh, the main concept of festival is that everyone can participate. Like the craziest people, the craziest ideas. Uh, you have to give gifts, uh, create something or make experiences. You, if you know how to sing, you have to sing. If you know how to build something, you build something. Uh, nobody pays for nothing. And uh, you can do whatever you want. Nobody has a right to judge you. And you are responsible for yourself, but also for others. And others are responsible for you. And you have to have fun and you have to make uh, like you have to have cr create something and participate. You cannot just be there. Uh, and from this festival come so uh, many interesting things. Like for example, uh, if you notice the, the similarity of a refugee camp, uh, it's quite similar. And what what the festival is doing is actually because they had people built these houses so they are comfortable comfortable to live in at the festival. So they moved this idea and they started to build these houses in the refugee camps. Uh, and so these creative people, they make mistakes, they do nonsense, and at the end they come out of something incredible. And I think this is very important for a library to be such a space where people can make mistakes and do crazy things, uh, you know, and still feel safe. Uh, so while making games with kids uh, or with elder people, uh, this is what we aim for. And example is uh, Game Jam. Uh, we do more events, but this is the largest one. So we open our library for three days, two nights, uh, and it's open 24 hours. Uh, there is some security, but not too much. Uh, over 400 people come in, from, from professional developers to kids. Uh, kids have to have the parents' signature that parents let them do this. Uh, so uh, they come, they sign up, and they form a teams. They can eat there also at the library, can you imagine? So uh, what's, what's in it for library? So we get all these people who actually, some of them come, come to the library for the first time. Uh, and they see this library and they say, wow, you know, I thought that library is just, you know, this room with books. Uh, and this is a chance for them to see library and for us to show our services, but also this is a chance for our librarians to participate. And some of them do actually, uh, and they are part of teams and they uh, write narratives or some of them draw and on the other hand, we can hire if we need, uh, like it's always a problem, I guess here too, to hire IT people to the library because salaries are way lower at the libraries than uh, in that environment. And you can find people, young people who want to do something with IT but still don't have job and they would come to work for the library maybe for half a year, but still, you know, it's uh, someone we need. We need. 
so again, uh, coming back to the game jam, we have a space to sleep for them. They can sleep there. Uh, this guy didn't find the space, I guess, but he sleeps on the chair. So, but yeah, they, they can be there all night, two, two nights in a row. And then after that, they have a ward, and we do this with, uh, not on our own, we, we do this together with uh, our Game Developer Association. So Game Developer Association organizes everything. We just provide space uh, and some rules uh, and a uh, you know, safe environment. Then they get presents and everyone is happy. And this is an example of a game that's made in two days. No violence, nothing special. But basically a Viking has to survive winter. But again, uh, the idea here, someone made the first 3D model, no, you know, then someone drew art. Uh, there was a professional who helped uh, the person who was making first 3D model. Someone made first animation, uh, and that's what's important. Someone learned to do uh, video editing to make this movie, and yeah, and that's what Game Jam and all other events like this are about. And for that, you don't really need to have game developers, uh, experienced game developers in the library. Thank you.